Standing before the villain, I eyed him from it before my sunglasses, watching his every move and listening to his every word. He was currently in the middle of one of those villain speeches that reveals their big, big evil plan and whatnot. It was pretty entertaining to listen to, as the man just openly admitted and revealed all the info he needed to take him and his newly found guru down. Glancing over to my purple head partner, Shinso, we both gave a nod to each other before looking back to the villain. Hey, buddy, you need to look. Looking up towards the sun, I held my hands, grasping into the glowing rays that protect, protracted warmth onto me. Turning my body towards the villain in front of me, I held my stance as I brought my hands down, directing the light towards them. Lighten up. The light seemed to temporarily blind him, so I moved my hand again and focused on the imp- imp- oh my God. manipulating the warm shades, shreds of light, the glow falling down my fingers as I guided into a spear-like weapon, letting my fingers fall around it. I quickly threw it towards the man, but as soon as I did, there was an outside movement that stopped it. Seeing the light spear get kicked away, I glanced over to see two other figures emerging from the shadows of the alleyway, one holding their hands up towards the light as I just threw, while the other looked like they were almost hyped up on caffeine and sugar. Shit, I heard Shinzo mumble out as I felt his weight shift towards me. I knew he was looking at the two figures, who both now looked pissed off. Quickly glancing around, seeing nobody around, I let out a sigh and guided my hands around again, gathering some light. My eyes never let the gr- group as I heard, heard the energy ball in my hand, a smirk on my face. I get the mag- magician guy. You handle the big guy and the child. Yeah, because I'm great with children. I sarcastically commented b- back before ch- charging off into the battle. Stre- streak- what? Streaking, whoa. Striking again with a shockwave of light. I turned over to see Shinso easily gaining control over the magician guy after a few minutes. But those few seconds were interrupted as someone or something jumped onto my back and began to pull me back like a monkey. Letting out a yell, my hands instantly reached behind me, trying to grab the spider monkey villain. Drink break. Alright, sorry. Thinking I grabbed onto their outfit or them, I leaned forward, almost tucking myself into my legs as i pulled them forward using all my strength i threw them forward and off of me now it was their turn to let out a yelp as they stumbled to the ground with a thud letting out a sigh i suddenly realized there was another villain to face with that i turned myself around glancing behind me that see that the villain was actually busy fighting shinso Seeing as Shinso was still in control of the magician guy, who was not compressed, and usually them against the bigger villain, I felt confident in his abilities and turned and yeah, turned back to my own guy. Seeing it as though they were jumping around, similar to a frog, I tried to follow the movements. Holding my hands up, I collected a few rays of sunlight before attempting to aim it at the jumping villain, watching them as they jumped from building to building window to window i kept my hand trained on them just as i felt like i had their movements down i noticed they had disappeared lowering my hand along with my guard i glanced around the building just before i felt something hit me it was cold and almost felt like it was burning my body but i couldn't move away i was held in place by some unseen force and forced to take the cold steering pain Gritting my teeth, I finally took a note of where the villain was, approaching from the shadow once more. Look at you! You're stuck! They loved a hyena-sounding laugh. They made me flinch a bit. That stinks. I thought you'd be harder to get to. But, oh well, I'm a few seconds. 
you'll be just as weak and useless as my buddy over there. If I could move, I'd raise my eyebrows out of, conf- of, out of confusion, not understanding the full potential of what their quirk was. But just like that, oh, just like always, I was saved by the bell, as suddenly the growing pain and unknown force seemed to let go of me. I fell down a bit on the ground, feeling weak and tired, almost like an energy in me had been drained. Turning my head over to the villain, I saw them laying on the ground, knocked out while Shinso stood above them. He turned around, almost dismissed the two other villains he had under his control to collapse themselves and wait for the police. After that, he turned back towards me, and I could see him running a bit over to my fallen body. Yin, are you okay? He quickly asked, guarding to use my hero name, showing he was far more concerned with this. Looking up at him, I gave a small nod. I think so. Just seem tired now. Let's get you up, he answered, grabbing a hold of me and hoisting me up. As he stood me up, I leaned onto him, feeling like my legs were jelly. As we were up and turned back around to the villains, I could hear sirens signaling that they were near. With a sign, I glanced over to Shinso, giving a smile. Good job, partner. He turned to look at me, pulling down his bottom mask piece, showing his own smile too. You too. At this point, I felt myself grow even more weak, my legs completely giving out from underneath me as I collapsed onto Shinso's arms fully. Looking up to him, it was like my mind was shutting down. As my eyes fluttered open and shut, I could see his instinct panic as his grip on me tightened, trying to keep me up. Hey, you're fine. Don't fall asleep on me, please. And just like that, my mind fell asleep completely. And of course it did, just in the course of a few minutes. I felt warm. I felt like I was by a fire and it felt nice. I wanted some more warmth. I felt so cold. Opening my eyes, I almost sprang to life, panic rushing to me as I was overwhelmed with confusion and fear. But at the sight, I was in a small bedroom. I instantly relaxed and my panic flew away from me. Glancing around, I noticed that I was under the heavy weighted blanket Shinso suggested we get. Along with a fuzzy blanket, I felt the need to drunkenly purchase the other night. Cuddling up to the fuzzy blanket, I let out a sound. With that sound, my eyes widened quite a bit, as I didn't understand where the hell I came from within me. It was a throat rumbling noise. It almost sounded like a cat purring, which made me feel a little worried. Seeing me though, Shinso was nowhere in the room. I decided it'd be best to get up on my own. So throwing off the blankets and took note of how I wasn't as tall as I was before. I was about a foot shorter than I normally was, which began to throw me into another moment of confusion. Jumping off the bed, I let out a yawn before walking towards the bedroom door and opening it. Letting it fall open, I looked out into the hallway, still not seeing anything of my purple-haired boyfriend. As I shrugged it off, assuring he was probably busy with some after-work paperwork, Walking towards the bathroom door, I opened that and quickly walked in, feeling the need to go and do my business. I turned around towards the mirror for a split second before I let out a scream. Instantly, I heard footsteps rushing my way. Within seconds, I saw my tired boyfriend standing in the doorway. Turning towards him, I let let my scream fade as I pointed at myself. What the hell is this? I yelled out, pointing more specifically to the newly formed cat ears that seemed to be attached to my head, along with the cat tail that felt to be coming out of my lower back. I could see his panicked expression made into a soft smile as he chuckled a little. I think it adds more onto your cuteness, he commented, and I seemed to hiss at him. It felt awkward to hiss, almost like I was in a one of those girls in the seventh grade who tried to convince everyone she was a cat not to be specific or anything okay but how did this happen i asked more (laughs) importantly giving him a bit of a glare as he chuckled at a bit through his words well you remember how you got hit by the villain quirk earlier today 
I nodded. So the quirk was transformation anyone into an animal. Andy, you got hit. But since you broke out of the quirk early, you only got half of the effects of it. And now you're a cute little cat. He leaned down and pet my head, causing me to let out a weird purring noise again before swatting his hand away. No, no, none of that. I stampered out, walking around his walking around his legs, not really having to use the bathroom anymore. So how long does this last? 24 hours, he answered, following me as we both walked down the hall into the living room area. And now, how long has it been? I asked, more jumping slash climbing onto the couch, watching as Shinso sat down next to me. Why jumping slash climbing? You're not cat size. Under mine. His soft smile never left his face as he just looked down at me, his hands reaching out and petting me once more. Only two hours. I groaned, pushing his hand away from fall falling down. He bit onto my lap, onto his lap. Looking up to him, his purple eyes were trained down on me as he held his smile still. Damn, I'm so stuck. Like this for 20 more, 22 more hours? I shrugged my head a bit into his stomach as it felt warm and soft to lay on. I don't see an issue. That just means I get 22 hours of a little cute cat girl. He explained his voice changing ever so slightly so like he was talking to a baby or a small dog. I glared at him, shaking my head. I rolled around a little before getting comfortable on his lap some more. Almost out of instant of habit, my body curled up into his. Despite being a bit bigger on his lap, feeling of his hand come into contact with my hair, I felt himself push, push up against it, curving his touch a bit more than usual. But before my purring started, I cut it off, realizing what I was going to do. And for that, I fell off the couch, hitting the floor. I hissed out. No, I said none of that. But kitten, please. He looked down towards me, his eyes begging, just let me take care of you for one day. Looking into his eyes, I felt intimidated. I felt like I was going to be pulled in by some unwanted and unknown force yet again, but I didn't want to give in. I didn't want to be that little cat girl thing for a day, but it sounded nice to have him take care of me for the day, so it couldn't be that bad, right? Plus this puppy dog begging eyes i just can't say no fine but only for the day after that i refused to pull of some weird role play stuff i answered back honestly hearing him slightly cheer about it deal and with that i jumped back onto the couch and laid down on his lap again feeling his warmth i felt happy and calm knowing i was safe with him but not only that I felt his hand fall down and begin to play with, play with, run down his fingers through my hair. I definitely purred at the feeling as it was relaxing me. It gave me a sense of comfort as I felt it through. It was purring me, putting me to sleep. I kept my eyes closed as I let out purrs. Shinso, hearing Shinso's quiet chuckles in the background. He seems to switch on the TV as well. Hearing that as well, but I ignored it as I just felt comfort on Shinzo's lap. Maybe I could get used to this, I mumbled out, leaning more into the purple man's body, feeling happiness arise from me him. I knew he was satisfied with our situation, but he confronted as it spoke. I could too. Now rest, my little kitten. You're too cute like this. And I did exactly that. I felt like gosh darn Garfield on Monday morning because it felt even better to be a cat and get cuddled.